In this quick video guide, we're going to see how we can export a 3D model from WAMP 3D. You can see right here the website, and we already dedicated another guide to how we can quick start in uh, WAMP 3D and create 3D models. So you can see how many uh, models have been published and created by other users and uh, the, the potential that this uh, tool has. Now, this doesn't need to be downloaded or installed. You just need to access the website. And when, then we're going to see how we can import in a 3D software like Blender, which is uh, free and open source. So this one here, it's an actual software. So you, you need to download it and install it. If you don't know what Blender is, you can check other video guides and the video course in our channel dedicated to Blender. And also, if you want, if you're interested, you can check also other video courses and video guides in other 3D software that you find in a channel. So I'm just going to create a new project. Again, this is not going to be specific about uh, any modeling tool in particular, but we're just going to focus on the export and import process. So we're going to use this standard scene that we find when we open up uh, WAMP 3D. And we're also going to see how we can export the material uh, using the textures. So up on the top, we find the export button. We need to select the 3D object or uh, mesh. So we are exporting the mesh. And we have two ways. We have general. We can set up the format. We have the quality, which is uh, basically the number of polygons or triangles that we can export. So if we increase the quality, we're gonna get we're gonna have more uh, triangles. We're gonna have more polygons. We're gonna have more complex mesh. If we decrease the quality, we're gonna have less. Now uh, this can be also addressed and changed in Blender. And if you want, you will find also a, a specific uh, video course in sculpting and 3D modeling in Blender. Now we also have 3D print, and you can see that this is experimental. So in this way, everything will be like uh, merged into one mo into one mesh. Otherwise, with the generic uh, feature, you have uh, uh, objects that will be separated. Now again, uh, since this is experimental, you could find something unstable or corrupted. So in this video, I'm going to use OBJ, which is also good once we are in uh, Blender to fix the model and then uh, export the SDL file directly from Blender. So we can fix it and adjust it before we print it in Blender as well. So we have these two ways we can export a 3D object. Now with the OBJ, we're also going to export textures and uh, we're going to be able to, to recreate the material in uh, Blender. So I'm going to use this OBJ and um, let's just wait. Because uh, since this is uh, everything is happening online, it's from uh, a server, we need to wait longer than the usual. And uh, you can see here the, all these processes in the queue that have been completed. And this is the one that it, it's uh, working right now. So if you go in the download button up there, you can see all the processes that are in the queue in uh, WOM 3D. And there it is. So if you want more details, you can click on this little arrow. You can also delete the process if you want. But if you click on the little arrow, it's going to give us the, some more information about what it's doing. So you can see it's triangulating voxels, simplifying the triangles, uh, extracting the UV map, unwrapping the mesh, and baking the texture. Now, if you don't know all this stuff, again, search in the channel. You will find a video guide talking about how to unwrap, how to create UV maps, what are UV maps, what are uh, what is baking texture, what are triangles, and so on. So if you're not an expert, probably if you're using WOM 3D, you are a beginner, you're starting working with 3D, you, you may want to check the, those things. Now, when it's finished, you can see it's going to ask you to, where you want to save it. And in this case, I'm just going to save this as test OBJ general, so not for print. And it's going to create a zipped folder, which I'm going to extract. So right click and extract into the same location. Now, this is going to be in Italian in the interface of Windows, but uh, it's so simple, you don't, you don't worry about that. And here you can see you have many textures. This is the 3D object right here. And uh, then we have a material file. But all we need is the 3D object and the, the other textures. So let's see what's going to happen in Blender. Now, this could change depending on the software that you will use. So I'm using Blender, but you can use Cinema 4D, Maya, 3ds Max, 
And again, you find all the, the video courses in the channel. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and use not STL, but OBJ. Now, OBJ can be found, it's a really popular format, can be found anywhere, but also STL. Now, you can also, again, import in OBJ and export from Blender in STL, if this is going to work better than exporting directly from WAMP 3D. And by the way, if you don't know how to use Blender anyhow, check the, the video course in the channel so that you can start to use it. It's a really helpful and uh, free tool, really simple to use. Now I'm going to navigate into the folder where I saved my OBJ. So I'm going to go here and uh, get into the folder, which is uh, that one here. So test OBJ general. And there are two files. One is OBJ, one is MTL. We want to have the OBJ. So I'm going to click on that and click on the button to import Wavefront OBJ. And there you go. You can see here the, the object that we worked on. on uh, WAMP 3D, the, the standard object, which is a sphere with a cube, basically. And uh, it's like a, a subtraction of a sphere and an addition of a sphere, like a Boolean. And you can see this is just one object. So we don't have different meshes here. We only have one mesh. If we had different meshes that were not uh, merged together, it would bring those all separated. And if we go in the wireframe mode in Blender, we can see that we have this structure, which is made of triangles mainly. So it's not like a precise structure. It's not like topological, uh, topologically, um, you know, neat, but it's fine. It's good for modeling. It's good for sculpting, for soft modeling and so on. Now you can check the material if you go in the material preview mode, material preview mode or render here. So you can switch from uh, different ways. You can see the your scene, and you can switch the render engine from EV to cycles to have better results. Now we can see a little bit of the material from of the original material, but we cannot see like transparency and reflections. Now this is due to some uh, settings that we need to do in Blender. And um, first of all, I want to take off the wireframe from the object, so we can see the the material and um, just the material, and that's it. But we can see we have different fading, different colors. This is thanks to the texture and the unwrapping that has been made for, for, uh, for us from um, WAMP 3D. Now, if we want to fix a little bit the material, we need to switch into shading interface here in Blender. And here we have the main material with the texture. And we can only see that, we can see that it's a, it has only one texture. So if we want to add more, effects to the material we need to work with the maps and the material again if this is really uh you know difficult for you don't worry uh this is kind of more advanced so i just copy and paste the texture with ctrl c ctrl v so i can use another texture that has been exported from warm 3d so you can see that one is transmittance one is normal so every one of these has its own um task its own uh, reason to be. So this one here is the only one we're using, which is the color or diffuse. Now let's use the transmittance. And I'm going to use this by clicking and linking this to the transmittance um, channel of the material. So you can see something already changed. Now to see this uh, more effectively, we need to change from material preview into render mode. So this is the way we can check the uh, the, the transparency so glasses and uh, transparent materials. And also here, up here, I want to change. I want to deactivate the scene world. I want to use an HDRI or image-based lining so we can see a little bit better. And you can see now it's definitely looking way better than the beginning. Now, the, the glass doesn't look really uh, a, a clear glass. It looks like, like a frosted glass. So we need to drop down the roughness so it becomes more uh, nice and neat. So you can see this is really similar to the one that we see in um, WAMP 3D, but the quality is probably better, but you can like, you know, compare the two. But that's just the beginning. So if you want to move on, uh, there are a lot of things you can do in Blender now. You can do animation and all sorts of stuff. But again, uh, you can do sculpting, you can do uh, mapping, painting, and many, many more things. But you will find those in other video guys dedicated 
to Blender or in the video course, in Blender video course that you find your channel. So this will be all for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next. Please subscribe if you want to stay updated. Please join if you want to support. See you in the next.